Greetings, viewers, and welcome at long last to the Rooster Teeth vs. Special. Before we begin, a bit of explanation. Um, for those of you who are not already aware of this, my recording device, which is really just the voice memo feature of an MP3 player, is busted. I'm doing this with my brother's recorder, actually, um, because my, my battery for some reason just does not work any longer. It drains incredibly quickly. It has like a lifespan worth nothing and certainly not long enough to record a video of me rambling. Um, like it's pretty bad with the music. I don't it's not even worth the time to bother trying to get it to work with the record part. That's always worked worse than the rest of it. So it's basically, I really have no all means of recording videos. So after this one, you probably won't get um, a recorded video for quite a while with me actually speaking. Because the replacement MP3 player I bought to replace this, my old one, does not have a voice record feature. So it'll be pretty limited to whenever I can borrow something that we can, can record off of someone else is the only time I'll be able to do these videos. So expect a lot of things like music videos to be coming out soon because um, I don't really have a lot of choice at the moment. Uh, but I am taking the time to go ahead and borrow my brother's equipment so I can bring to you the Rooster Teeth Special, a project I've been working on for a while and I'm very excited to do. Like at this point, simply because there are so many people doing Star Wars verses and like hardly anyone at all doing verses for either of Rooster Teeth's two shows I'm doing here today, Rube and Red for Blue, I honestly be content to really just do Rooster Teeth specials. Um, Rooster Teeth Versus, I should say, because they're not Star Wars, so I can make full-blown Versus videos for them. Or at least I could if I could actually record anything. But, c'est la vie. Anyways, let us begin. We've got 13 suggestions here, and they actually get scaled up and more complicated uh, the further we go on. But we start with a relatively simple one, Agent Texas versus Boba Fett. This is probably going to be really controversial, especially since I am a Star Wars fan and should always, of course, support and root for my series. And I do. Uh, but the simple fact is, um, even when we include Expanded Universe works, Agent Tex simply outranks Boba Fett, at least as a hand-to-hand -hand combatant. <clears throat> um, in terms of equipment and long-range combat, the two are actually pretty evenly matched, all things considered. Um, but the simple fact is, Tex is literally superhuman. I don't really think Boba Fett can, like, throw tanks around. And it has been demonstrated a lot more in hand-to-hand -hand combat and a lot more effective at it. Although, of course, Boba Fett doing things like lightsaber dueling Darth Vader should never be overlooked or underestimated. Uh, but nonetheless, I stem rather diversely gonna side with Agent Texas on this. Her equipment is pretty much even. She's bet stronger, faster, and a better hand-to-hand -hand combatant, and she can certainly close the distance to bring it to a contest of hand-to-hand, -hand, and in that situation, I believe she'll win. That is at least the most likely scenario. But anyways, next battle, the meta versus Wash and York. A completely red versus blue battle. And this is rather depends somewhat on how you view the meta. I am um, of the opinion that the meta should be considered a different character from Agent Main. Um, at really three different metas. Um, Agent Main, the meta with the AI fragments, and the meta without the AI fragments. And in my opinion, the most powerful of those three is the meta with the AI fragments. It's just a shame they didn't have the CGI animated fights back then to give him. Uh, but if we assume this is the meta in his prime, um, and to be fair, the meta without the AI fragments is still pretty close to how powerful he was with them. Um, it's just from what I understand about how the equipment and armor works, he won't be nearly as effective in that regard as he would be if he still had the uh, Sigma to run things for him. Uh, but regardless, the meta is still 
easily the third most powerful person in the entire Red vs. Blue universe, and can quite frankly take on Wash and York. Wash did an amazingly good job, all things considered, against him, um, but he still lost. And likewise, York did turn out to be surprisingly um, good against Carolina, like he didn't go down after about a second. But still, the two are rav not exactly the top of the leaderboard during Project Freelancer, and although they're both certainly effective, especially at their primes, even with their camaraderie and teamwork, I'm still gonna hand the meta this one. The dude's creepy good. Or maybe just plain creepy. Um, ignore that sound. My little brother is um, running around the recording studio fighting invisible robots. He, he does that. Um, and not the little brother I'm bothering the recording bro, bothering borrowing the recording the equipment from he's like one year younger than me it's my four year old that keeps interrupting my video game recordings um, but anyways that's not important next battle Weiss Schnee pretty sure I'm not saying that correctly versus Arwen from Lord of the Rings a rather surprising matchup and unfortunately a rather unbalanced one as Arwen isn't exactly the weird type. Um, in the movies, she, well, she runs away from rain wraiths and summons giant water spirits and stuff like that, but she's still not exactly a combatant, and in the books, even less so. She's royalty. She's not really expected to go out on the front line and fight battles, and thus, she doesn't. Um, so, <laughs> quite frankly, Weiss is a fighter, Arwen is not. It's a bit like sending Chancellor Val Valarum up against Qui-Gon Jinn. It's um, a bit one-sided on the side of the get person who actually fights. So Weiss gets the victory here. Um, next is a really cool battle, actually. Team Ruby from Ruby versus Team Juniper from Ruby. This is really complicated and literally deserves the entire video to itself very much so but to give it um it, to sum up so we don't spend all day talking about this as fun as that would be um i will tentatively side with team ruby for being overall better um certainly out of all of these pyra is definitely the best fighter well not the most powerful, I don't really think, because of how she uses her semblance. She's not like, the most overtly, obviously powerful of the group. Like, that's kind of the point of how she uses it. But I think from what we've seen, she is the best fighter out of these eight. Um, the fa sad fact is that Jean is um, not. He definitely gets a lot better, and he's capable, certainly, but he's not playing on the same field as, say, Ruby or Yang. Um, and Nora and Rin are closer, but still, overall, I would um, side with Team Ruby on this. They're like four twos if that makes any sense, versus Pyra, who is a three, but John, Ren, and Nora, who are ones. That's, of course, not accurate at all, and for the most part, Team Juniper will definitely be giving Ruby a run for its money, and really, these two are pretty much as closely matched as two teams of four individuals can get, but ultimately, my vote goes to Ruby just barely pulling out a win, maybe at the loss of a few more limbs, if Team Juniper is fighting to kill. Uh, next is Pyra versus Carolina, a really cool matchup that really deserves its own video, even though in some ways it could be anticlimactic. because my verdict on this is Pyra can control metal and is fighting someone wearing a metal suit. So although Carolina is definitely on par with Pyra in many regards, she is simply not equipped to properly deal with someone who could literally control everything about her. Wearing a metal suit to fight people like Pyro or Magneto is a really bad idea. Carolina can't really be blamed for that, of course, but still, it rather pushes it in Pyra's favor. Um, next is Team Red from Red vs. Blue versus Team Blue from Red vs. Blue. This matchup does not win points for originality. But it does win points for being fun. Um, the deciding question here is, um, does 
the blue team get to keep their freelancer personnel. Um, and that's a rather important question, because if they have either Wash or Tex, or even worse, both, on their team, then this is incredibly one-sided. Curb Stomp. If they don't, however, I would actually rather favor the Reds. Um, neither Sister or Donut really come into the equation here. Um, Church, because he became a computer program before the CGI showed up, is definitely the least um, combatively viable person here because he never got CGI animation, so he's literally just a sniper who can't anything, which is not exactly useful in a battle. Um, Caboose is almost there with him due to not exactly being the sharpest tool in the box, um, and I doubt he will be getting angry here like he did before, um, because it's a bit, <laughs> because there's really no reason for him to. Um, so ultimately, it's kind of the same as Team Ruby versus Team Juniper. I definitely think out of all the reds and blues, Tucker is the best fighter, but Caboose, Church, and Sister are not. And Sarge, uh... Griff and Simmons, not to mention Lopez, kind of push it in the Reds' favor. So we will give this victory to the Reds. Unless, of course, the Blues have either their Freelancers or the Tank. In which case, they kind of get the edge. Um, next is an even more difficult one that we could definitely spend all day on. Project Freelancer versus Ruby and Juniper. I'm going to assume they mean just the pr freelancers we saw, not like the entire project of the battleship and 50-something super soldiers. In which case, yeah, obviously freelancer would win. Um, I can't really get into detail again because there's just so many characters here to cover, but I will give the edge to team, teams Ruby and Juniper for overall more effectiveness. Like, even Jean, I would give a slight edge to when fighting, say, Wyoming or Butch Flowers. Uh, maybe... Well, I guess those two didn't really get a time to shine, but... Uh, regardless, I think overall the teams take this over Project Freelancer. Very tentatively. Again, that's a big matchup to just throw into a versus special. It's not easy to cover these things sometimes. Um... So, next battle, Weiss and Winter versus Ruby and Yane. This is... Okay, I don't want to spend too much time on this again. So, we will give uh, the Schnees the win very uh, hesitantly, um, simply because Winter is... As good as Team Ruby is, all of them, you still have to remember they're the equivalent of first-year students. They are sophomores. They're not really anywhere near reaching their full potential, in the words of Ninjago. Um, so, Weiss is roughly comparable, combatively speaking, to either Ruby or Yane. I don't really think any of those three can really be called um, concretely a better fighter than the other two, except maybe Ruby. Um, but I think Winter, as the actual experienced, fully adult, fully trained uh, huntsman, I think balance, uh, tips the scales in favor of the Schnees. Again, as good as Ruby and Yane are, I will give the edge to the team with the more experienced and older fighter. Uh, next, Ozpin versus Gandalf the, Gandalf the White. A really awesome matchup between two really cool characters that I am very fond of, and that is rendered moot by me have reading the Lord of the Rings novel with the revelation that Gandalf the White literally cannot be harmed by um, traditional methods. So as awesome as Ozpin proved to be in the season 3 finale, like Yoda level fighter, that doesn't do a lot of good if you can't hurt Gandalf. And sadly, Ozpin doesn't really have any mystical element to him, like, say, the Witch King of Anmore, although that is definitely just a movie. In the books, you're given the feeling that if Gandalf and the Witch King had actually fought, it would have been a little bit of a one-sided curb stomp on Gandalf's behalf. But, um, uh, anyways, we'll go with the movie, because they actually fought in the movie, no matter how illogical that may be. Uh, but anyways, Ozpin, really awesome. Gandalf the White, just a little bit more awesome. 
Um, the next battle kind of makes up for it. Cinder versus Jadis. This is a really close call and a battle between two really ridiculously awesome villains. But, and there's always a but, I will go with Cinder in this. There's always a however. VeggieTales quote, yay! That doesn't really matter right now. Um, simply due to being the more overtly powerful one. Jadis, for the most part, kind of like Jadis versus Gandalf, if she can one-shot Cinder, then she one-shot Cinder, and a good deal of rounds will end with her just turning Cinder to stone, because I don't really think Cinder has much uh, chance of surviving if she actually gets hit by the spell. The problem is the chances of Cinder getting hit by the spell are not high. And in a prolonged engagement, I will give Cinder the edge. She's not only a sorceress, witch, queen, whatever, like Jadis is, but she's also a dang good fighter. So she really gets the advantage here. Um, the last couple are really big fights, but we'll have to uh, go through them quickly because I'm already spending like a lot of time on this. You will forgive me for that, I hope. I have been wanting to do this for a while. Rooster Teeth characters are quite simply awesome, and I really wish they got more recognition and used more in versus videos. I will have to apparently plan on doing more um, Ruby and Red vs. Blue specials in the future, or perhaps actual proper versus videos. Who knows? Um, <laughs> and by actual proper, I mean um, 10 minutes of unscripted rambling. Like, unfortunately, the writing theme is still not very likely at the moment, but that's not really important right now. Um, last three battles... Cinder, Mercury, and Emerald versus the brother, the sister, and the High Inquisitor. This is n not fair. Both the brother and the sister are like Q-level, supernatural, nigh-onnipotent beings. And as powerful as Cinder was in the finale, she still can't compare. And throwing the High Inquisitor there doesn't really matter. Again, when you have both the brother and the sister, either one of them who could take on Cinder emerald and mercury by themselves so star wars team takes it this time around next is roman torchwick versus hondo onaka who wins nobody wins that if those two meet um i declare that they want to actually fight and would just like take over the world and sponsor the ferengi and just like literally buy out both the heroes and the good guys and retire with a lot of money but that's not really important um in an actual fight i'd favor roman torchwick he's the more versatile and adaptive fighter unless of course hondo just manages to just plain shoot him um that would be a pretty underwhelming end and the final battle, another really big one, which I like doing the big ones, but it's really hard to not spend, um, they're, they're big battles. They, I probably should give these giant team battles an entire video to themselves so I can actually properly talk about them. But anyways, we have Ozpin, Ironwood, Glinda, and Crow versus Venzalo, Nost Dural, Chaos and Durach, and Satil Shan. Um, again, love to spend more time on this, but I will leave it as uh, Team Ruby. Not like actual Team Ruby, just the team of Ruby characters. It, you know what I mean. Um, they edge out slightly the Star Wars characters. Ozpin and Satil Shan are pretty closely matched. But Ironwood, Glinda, and Crow, I think, um, do at least slightly overpower Venzalo, Nost Dural, and Kyle Cinderach. At least from, with what little, excuse me, comparatively we've seen from those three Jedi Masters. So, hesitantly giving this to the Ruby team. Can't say Team Ruby because that's just confusing. Um, to the fake American anime characters. We'll put it like that. Uh, the non-Star Wars side. Although, again, this would be a really awesome battle to, um, see and kudos to whichever one of you gave the suggestion nerds forever i think maybe i'm sorry i i don't know why i don't write down who gives me what suggestion but i don't because i'm an idiot so i can never remember um but anyways whoever gave that last suggestion kudos it's awesome actually to whoever gave me all these suggestions i like really enjoyed all of these even the relatively one-sided ones just the opportunity to talk more about rooster teeth and star wars of course 
is always appreciated. And um, this was really fun to do. It's I'm kind of bummed that I don't get to do a versus special or any rambling really for a while after this until I figure out how to get the recording situation fixed. Um, but I hope anyways you enjoyed this one. And I hope you like the content I have coming because I do have like a, um, a lot, like over half a dozen if not more music videos I actually made for my alternative channel where I pretty much do nothing but music videos. So I'm going to head and go ahead and post them here just to give you guys something to watch while I'm trying to figure out the rambling situation. Um, speaking of rambling, that's what I'm doing, and I should probably just sign off here. So, yeah, this is Hanu Moonraiser, and I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it. This was a blast. So just keep those suggestions coming, and in general, yeah, thanks for watching.